Welcome back, everybody, to Real Time for the Real Everyday Movie Fan. I'm, of course, Josh Williams. I'm Ryan Murphy. And I'm James Sheridan. Thank you so much for joining us today, everybody, because we are here to give you our reaction to the 2022 or 2013, 2023, however you want to look at it, Academy Award nominations that just released today, uh, March, not March 12th. What am I talking about? I just January, <laughs> January 24th. 24th I'm sorry. So um, you guys have not seen these? I have all? not. You guys have not spoiled yourself? Oh, okay, no, I I've, spoiled I've absolutely spoiled. Okay, oh, so Josh, okay. this is going to be a surprise for Josh. So, so this I was will not be a big this... surprise for me. Um, I the think only I thing that got spoiled for me I was waited. that there were no women nominated for Best Director. That's all I've heard so far. This is uh, this is uh, this is really like I think we did this last year, and I I waited until the evening, but I wasn't going to do that again this year. This is like the biggest day of the year for me. It's not it's bigger than the Oscars. Like all year, like now I just have to wait 365 days until the next Oscar nominations are announced. Like I just love hearing who the new nominees are. I love oh that person you know has never been in, now has never been an Academy Award nominee their whole career. Maybe they're someone who's had a long career. And now they're now now they get that before their name, so I I always like that, and I always really respond to it. So without further ado, let's uh let's scroll down and take a look, Josh. Yep, for Josh. we're all here for the Oscars.org site. So we've got mm -hmm. best actor in a leading role. I'll start us off, and then we'll kind of take turns announcing if you guys want. Oops, I'm got, saying oh, best picture Aust first. Austin Butler's Elvis. Yes. Uh. I'm uh, he was so good, Novus. Uh, Colin did, Farrell. Did you not have best picture? Did you not have best picture first? No, we've got actor something. in a leading role first. Yeah, if you go to Oscars.org, the first thing is actor in a leading role. Okay, whatever. Go ahead. <laughs> we got Colin Farrell for the Banshees of I can't pronounce that. In in it looks like in a Yeah, okay. Brandon in Fraser. Sharon. Oh, thank God. Brandon, Brandon Fraser, Fraser yeah. for the whale. That's who I've been rooting for this whole time. <laughs> Paul Mescal for After Sun. I'd never seen that or heard of it. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to check that out. And then Bill Nye for Living. Yep. All right. So last so, two ones, I not a clue, I'll be honest. Well, uh, the Freezer, interesting thing here. Yeah. Pulling for go him ahead. for The Whale. I've heard, I've not seen it. I'm going to try and go see it this weekend uh, up in Kansas City because I really want to see this movie. Um, and then Colin, uh, the, the Banshees uh, is actually available on, I believe, HBO Max. Or either that or Amazon Prime. But I need to check that out. But I've seen it's on Austin Disney Butler's Plus in Elvis. Canada. What's that? It's on Disney Plus in Canada. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, now, Josh, you 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 haven't seen the Banshees of Inisherin, and we know you haven't seen In Bruges for crying out loud. Um, I think I may see that tomorrow for the first time, just so I can because this the is line, I've seen it because this is Martin McDonough. This is like for like I was talking to my dad about this because we went to go see In Bruges together. 13 years ago, 15 years ago when it came out and it's Colin Farrell and, and Brendan Gleeson directed by Martin McDonough. And so he reunited them for this and this time they all got Oscar nominations for it. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, 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 and then you have seen, you're a bigger fan than I am of th three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Mm -hmm. um, and I, neither one of us, none of us have seen seven psychopaths, but he tends to make good movies. Uh, but uh, the interesting thing here, guys, is that, um, all five Academy, all five acting best actor nominees are first time nominees. Not one of these guys has ever been received a nomination before. Brennan Fraser, Austin Butler, uh, Colin Farrell really never has gotten a nomination. Yeah, I'm surprised by Colin, Colin Farrell, Farrell not having gotten one. Paul Mescal. Well, he's been nomination. Like he's had, he's had some pretty big roles. Right? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. And That's Bill Nye, really I'm surprised Bill Nye hasn't had a nomination. Like yeah. he's yeah. pretty well regarded. For Underworld, Rise of the Lichens. I mean, come on, let's like. Let's... I mean, obviously not Bill Nye, where's, the where's science the... guy. So I gotta look him up. Who is he again? Bill Nye, you've seen him. He was in uh, he was in the Underworld movies. Uh, he's an English actor. He's oh, got a okay. very like yeah, yeah, yeah. angry yeah, face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he was the he was the, the he replacement was... Minister of Magic in the la in the very last Harry Potter movie when the when the Cornelius Fudge he gets was, fired. The new guy was... comes in and he. On screen for five seconds. Famously, so. he's Davy Jones in um, the Pirates yes. movie. Oh, yeah. He yeah. was the oh, stepdad in um, Shaun of the Dead. Huh. Oh, yeah. He's the, oh, God, yeah. yeah. He's been a Like, lot he's of everywhere. He's in been in all kinds of stuff and he's had a prolific career and he's very, like, well regarded. So I'm surprised that he's, he's never, never had been a nominated nomination for an Academy before. Gary wow. Oldman was not nominated for an Academy Award until 2011. 
That's I mean, that was his thing. Well. It was like not like he was the never nominated old man. Like it was just like he couldn't get. And now he's now he's now he's now he has has an Oscar. But right. but yeah. So great great for these because I've been I've always been a fan of Brendan Fraser. I think a lot of people have. I think he's that's also got the... a lot of shit over the years. But like, there's always been like a huge fan base that just you know has well had, had him in the corner. It's not just him getting shit. It's that like he got basically blacklisted from the yeah. industry because he. Mm-hmm. Um, wouldn't stay quiet about um, a very unfortunate incident with someone who is very powerful within the industry. Um, so his like a lot of people have been really pulling for his return because he's a giant sweetheart of a human being, and yep. a lot of us, especially our generation, grew up on him in um, you know the Mummy movies and George of the Jungle and Sino yeah, Man and you know, all this stuff where it's like you know there were pretty big movies at the time, and he was like a rising star and then just vanished from the face of the earth. Um, and now he's he's slowly began to have a comeback over the last couple of years. And like there's been a lot of hype for his role in the whale. Um, mm-hmm. And a lot of people were kind of pulling for him to be, you know, the sort of nominee um, this mm-hmm. year for best acting. And, you know, yeah. surpri- to, to no one's surprise, he actually got the nomination. Um, and it's it's fantastic to see. Uh, I'm very excited for this. That said, and Austin Butler is, how... is coming off of uh, his Golden Globe win for best performance. So, um, uh, and there's a lot of people who are like really praising his role. So, yeah, um, there's some and stiff also, competition like, here. I love how just appreciative he is of all this. Like his his acceptance speech at the Critics Choice Award just you know put a tear to my eye because he's so. I mean, the Critics Choice was is a pretty big award ceremony, I think, because but because uh, it's based around the critics, but not so much the point that you're like you know blubbering in tears but he was it's because of how long of a heart of a road he's had to get back to this mm-hmm. and it shows how appreciative he is of everything that's happened to him so far with this with this film and I, again i really couldn't be any more happier for him and i'm really excited that he's got you know now that he's got this he's got a couple more movies um on the way for 2023 i don't think so he was talking in an interview recently he said i, I i'm unemployed i don't have anything like that's but no he's so he's got movies coming i swear he got he has killers of the of the flower moon oh, oh okay. brothers coming out this year oh so wow he doesn't have he's anything in, he's on in the slate he's killers of the flower moon with. that's fucking awesome yeah he doesn't have anything to go the into next production question. with but he is part of a scorsese film i mean brothers wow. is um, I have a feeling if he wins, the the the, the roles are going to start like pouring in. So yeah, oh yeah, they're going to do it. They're going to pour into regardless. It's not like someone's no. on the phone. Like I don't think I should call him unless I know. Hey, does he win? okay? He won. And I'm like, they, like they, they, he's he's he didn't like Flynn at this point. But let's no, but let's we, not let's not go ahead. I mean, if you win an if you win an Oscar, you like yeah. you're basically guaranteed roles from then on. Like yep. no one goes unless from Adrian unemployed Brody to winning an Oscar Whitaker. to back to unemployed. So. Right. Or Jean, Jean Dujardin, um, lots of guys win an Oscar and then just completely fade away. Yeah. Uh, I, no, I haven't a... seen the other three, but I will say he does have sip competition with Austin Butler. His role as Elvis was miraculous. I mean, it's the reason he won his Golden Globe as well. Um, I mean, I am happy to see that he was nominated, but he didn't win for Critics Choice because I feel like you know, I from what I hear, Brendan Fraser is uh amazing that like i said i'm gonna see it this weekend like i said the only ones i've seen is austin butler but i intend to see all rest of them before oscar season before the oscar ceremony itself like we said colin farrell and bill nye are kind of heavyweights in terms of um acting and like regard and whatnot and yes austin butler's coming off his win but i think the hype alone around brendan fraser oh yeah gives him a slight edge in this category and i would be surprised if he lost this if he Mm -hmm. is it'll probably be to austin butler but um, given oh, what a darling he is at this moment, I think that it's kind of a given well, that what I always come get this. What I always come back to remember thinking is that the uh, 2014 Academy Awards, when like when they're announcing best leading role for an actor, I remember watching as they were about to announce it, and um, uh, oh my god, help me out here, 2014 Batman. McConaughey. No, no, that was so. 2014 was the year, but 2015 yeah, was, was the Academy Awards. So, um, so it would have been, um, uh, Batman, help me out here, guys. Jesus Christ, Michael Keaton. When Michael Keaton, Michael lost. Keaton was he was literally about to pull out his acceptance speech <laughs> when they announced Eddie Redmayne for his role. Yeah. So, like, you can't always um, no, say it's a given one, until it actually Josh, happens. No, the worst one of all time, like the goat of horribleness, is the 2020 out of all well, oh. 2021. 
when yeah they say like chadwick boseman they saved you're not you're familiar with this phenomenon james they no. saved the best actor award to last because they thought it was going to go to chadwick boseman and it would be a hell of a way to end the night so they gave best picture before best actor which has never happened before and will never happen again and they saved best actor to last and it was clear to everyone i mean they've never come out and said it but it was pretty clear to everyone that the reason they were doing this very strange thing was to have the night end on chadwick boseman posthumously winning his award and it gave went to anthony hopkins and <laughs> uh it was yeah that was rough it was yeah it was pretty rough that's pretty sad but all right guys let's move on uh Ryan, you want to go ahead and do the next one for best? Yes, in best actor supporting, supporting actor. Mm-hmm. Brendan Gleeson in The wow. Banshees of Inisherin. Brian Tyree Henry in Causeway. Awesome. I love him. Judd Hirsch in The Fablemans. Ooh. Barry Keoghan in The Banshees of Inisherin. I ugh. and Ki Hui Kwan ah. in Everything, Everywhere, <laughs> All yeah. at Once. Again, I, another yeah. category of heavyweights that you know. Uh, but four of these, with the exception of Judd Hirsch, four of these have never been nominated. So this is... What was my mind is, that Judd Hirsch has got a nomination? Right. Judd Hirsch was nominated for Best Supporting Actor of 1980 for Ordinary People. Really? And I think he may have had one since then. But yeah, he he's, he, he got a nomination ages and ages ago. Uh, you know, 40, 40 plus years ago. But um, right. by everyone else here... Breakfast Club. Judd Hirsch, what? Am I thinking of the wrong actor? Yeah, never yeah. mind. Go ahead. Oh, okay. But besides Brendan Fraser, of all the You're actors. Thinking of, uh, wait, hold on. Wait. You're thinking of Judd, Judd Nelson, Judd Nelson. Sorry. Oh, yeah. good. My bad. Judd Hirsch is from Taxi. Uh, yes. No, Judd Hirsch is outstanding as well. Yes. Give him yeah. thoughts. Okay. Give his thoughts. But uh, out of all the other actors besides Brendan Fraser, I was pulling for Ki uh, Hua Kwan to get Me nominated. Because, I mean, it's it's short round. It's. Data, you know, it's it's someone well, we, just I've like Brendan Fraser. Up, yeah. yeah, he's had this amazing comeback. Yeah, he's had this amazing comeback. And actually, there was an actors round table where Brendan Fraser and him were at the same yeah, round table. I, and they that were in, I, I love that I've never one. seen Encino Man, but I, I didn't know Kihi Kwan was in it. But uh, apparently they, they had this conversation where they looked at each other and Brendan Fraser went, we're still here. Like, yep. <laughs> I love that. I, I, I watched that one, too. I love that one so much. And again, these are these are all heavyweights that, you know, any one of them like. Brian uh, Tyree Henry, I love that he's getting a lot of attention. Brendan Gleeson is just fantastic. Um, he's always been. He's been for a long, yeah, like long 20, time. I, I, mean, I met him is, in 20. This is overdue. When, when I saw him in 28 Days Later, like to me, that like cemented him as like this just outstanding actor. And like he just shows up in all kinds of stuff. And like um, I'm glad he's getting attention. But I, I'm sorry. The only one I want to win this one is uh, Kihi Kwan because yeah. like, I haven't seen any. Of these not just movies, because so he's short round, not just because of Goonies, but because he's just such a genuine, sweet, wonderful person. Watching him talk, like his his Golden Globes acceptance speech, you talk about um, Brendan Fraser getting the the Critic Choice one. Like I teared up watching um, Kihi Kwan accept his and like point to steven spielberg in the audience because he gave him his start and everything and yeah. um how impactful that was and it's like I, i'm glad to see he's getting some momentum and because he's coming off of that win um i think he's he, he's definitely my favorite and i i'm definitely pulling for him and his role in everything everywhere all at once even it though it was, so it was it was it was smaller than i kind of hoped it would be but um he was so good as a supporting actor uh, what I, I loved in his role as an actor because it's no surprise he's playing multiple versions of himself, and there's moments in scenes where he has to flip a switch, almost like, um, uh, in Split, uh, James mm-hmm. McAvoy did the same, like, almost did the same thing, like where he had to play a different character like quickly, and it was so seamless, it worked so well that it uh it definitely deserves his best supporting uh, role, and mm-hmm. I'm pulling for him too, like. Just not just because he's day, um, data to me, but from Goonies, but he's also just he was. I mean, of course, I have not seen Banshees, uh, I haven't seen Causeaway, Fables, or Fablemans, but for now, I mean, just because of the story of his comeback and him and Brandon mm-hmm. Fraser, that's why, like, you root for them because they're like almost like the underdogs because they're new coming in from you know previous careers, and it, it just makes you warm inside to see that. So, well, the one guy I'm rooting against is Barry Keoghan. I 
it's funny we have two eternals two of the eternals are now brian tyree henry and barry keoghan are now yeah. duking it out for a uh, best supporting actor but uh i couldn't stand barry keoghan in the eternals and he's not like a bad actor i just there's just something about the guy there's you know you, you see that there's just something about a guy that just makes you want to punch him in the face with your keys in your hand like well, he also is the joker in the batman the yes batman. and that was hor- that was horrifying like in the wrong way um, wasn't he um that- what's his name in um the harry potter spinoff no, not somebody else. That's Ezra Miller. I think you're thinking of. Was it? I thought it was Barry Keoghan. No, I don't remember him being in it at all. I didn't see the third one, but I don't think he was in those movies. No. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I just I'm not. I'm not. I, maybe he'll convert me if I see Banshees of Inisherin. But yeah, like like James said, I mean the the favorites at this point are, um, Brendan Fraser and Kee Kwan. Although the best actor one could definitely be an upset considering Colin Farrell yeah. and, and, uh, but the, the best actor being upset, but those are the favorites right now. Um, but yeah, Brendan Gleeson seeing him finally get an Oscar nomination. I, you know, he could have gotten one easily for in Bruges. Um, I mean, just about uh, any role he's done, he could have gotten an Oscar nominated. Like I, 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 people will laugh when I say that, but like his role in 28 days later was, it was great. A did, did you all so. see him in Donald as Donald Trump? No, the Comey rule. Well, that was it. Was, oh, yes. it was made for TV. Uh, yeah, when he was Donald Trump. Yes, I have seen that. He was pretty good. He was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, that's Trump. the third. You had to ask me who you're gonna he's cast as Donald Trump. Bad but, guy. Know. He's dishonest guy. <laughs> so he was actually pretty good wanna... as Donald Trump. I will give him that. All right. All right. So James, you want to go on to next? Let's go to actress in a leading role. Yes, this year's nominees include Clay. Kate Blanchett for Tar Ooh. Terror. I don't know how to pronounce that one. Oh, um, yeah, I, think I think it's Tar. Anna de Armas for Blonde. Ooh, awesome. Uh, Andrea Riseboro, Riseboro, not sure. Uh, to Leslie, Michelle Williams, uh, The Fablemans, and Michelle Yeoh for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Mm, hell yeah. That's oof. I don't know about that one because I mean Michelle Yeoh is, you know, such so a good. she like prolific career. Mm-hmm. outstanding actress and, like, and first time nominee like, though this these are oh, let me get this out there's three three of these now uh there was five for for best actor four for supporting actor and three so first for the best lead actress are first time nominees so yeah. michelle yo yeah. uh uh on on yeah. the armis yeah. and andrea riceborough have never been nominated so yeah and, no. and her role in everything everywhere all at once um was outstanding she did such a great job in that role Michelle Williams in the Fablemans was like that would to me that's almost like a career defining performance. Wow. Um, so I'm glad to see her getting that nomination. Um, I unfortunately haven't seen the other ones. I mean, Kate Blanchett's legendary. Um, well, she's the favorite to win. Like if you're just asking who you should put your money on in the horse race, it's Kate Blanchett's going to get it. It's going to be her that's third. It's funny because I'm hearing Michelle Yeoh as the favorite, but it's funny I'm hearing. I was hearing through circles uh, blonde for Andy Armas because I heard she gives a powerful, impactful performance as Marilyn mm. Monroe. Hey, you have now, to say I've, seen it, I've seen it, and she does. Like, I love her performance. It's incredible. But yeah. if I remember right, like, you said that this is Michelle Williams' career-defining performance, but I don't know. I loved her in Manchester by the Sea when she oh, was God. nominated for that. To be fair, that I was... didn't see that one, but, like, everything oh. else I've seen her in, like... um. That she was a small role too. She wasn't on screen for that much long, and no, and and, and, it, uh, it, and her little scene was... broke me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but she she is part of like a big emotional crux within the Fablemans, and mm-hmm. um, like the whole purpose of Spielberg going back to tell this story that is semi autobiographical and whatnot, and is like very much based off of his own mother, um, and like from what I know of his mother, like she nailed this role and like you really feel for this woman and you know, this familiar, so familial situation that's sort of like breaking down over time. And, you know, she has her own sort of like issues and complications, but like, I don't know. I've not seen her do anything better. Yeah. Um, so I, and you watched I, Dawson's Creek. <laughs> yes. Unfortunately I did. Um, this wasn't goes, a big fan of her then, all... but you know, yeah. um, I will say, I think... can we, can we all agree that, out of all the lists we've seen so far, now I've only this is only the the third one, but this is the hardest one to call because this is a. I don't think so. I think no, it's gonna. I, I think Kate Blanchett's got it. See, I, I I'm I'm 100 percent in Michelle Yeoh's going in this one right there. Like I don't know, man. Like 
And I'm a, for Michelle Yeoh or Anna de Armas, but then again, I could probably watch Kate Blanchett, but she's in so much. She's the next so category that's so the tough good, one but, for me. Yeah. Well, then let's not waste any time. Who's who's Just, uh, who's who's reading this? I'll, I'll go next. So we've got actress in a supporting role. We got Angela Bassett mm, as for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Powerful performance. Uh, Hong, Chu, uh, Hong Chow for The Whale. Oh, awesome. She's, I love her as an actress. She's, uh, anyway, never sorry. heard of her. Carrie Condon for the Banshees of, and I'll let you sure? say that one. Oh, wow. Jamie Lee Curtis for everything ever yes. all at once. Fuck First yeah. time. First, First time. time. 40, 45, fingers. 45 years in the spotlight. Not one Oscar wow. nomination. So, to be fair, oh, to be fair also, her career daughter, sort of been... Stephanie, uh, I yeah. can't pronounce her name, has uh, sued everything ever all at once, too. She was great as well. See, that's I love. That's why I said this category to me is the toughest because Angela Bassett killed it in Wakanda Forever. Both Jamie Lee Curtis and Stephanie Hsu were outstanding in Everything Everywhere All at Once. Of course, Jamie Lee Curtis's role was a little more, uh, a little less of a role. And I mean, Stephanie Hsu is like the crux of the film. Um, but both of them were outstanding, um, yeah. even in like absurd situations like Hot Dog Fingers. Um, the other two, I, I don't have a dog in those fights, but like both the whale and banshees is getting all kinds of. So what do you right know now, this? So yeah, what do you know this Hong Chao from? What is what has she, she been in? She was you... in Inherent Vice. She had a, a small role as Jade. Okay. She was in Downsizing, which was the good little role there too. But her biggest one was this year. She played. She was in the menu as um, oh. Elsa, and she was so good in that role. Like I was so impressed. And I could just see her because I knew she was in the whale, so I was looking forward to that performance too. But just to see of course, her yeah. nomination is awesome. And of course, uh, Carrie Condon, uh, James is you know probably got it. She's got to be uh, you got to that's be you got to be a little bit in her corner because she's a Ghostbusters veteran. She also was um, she also was the uh, you guys didn't know this, but she was the Proxima Midnight in Avengers yeah. Infinity War and Endgame. Of course, she I was, knew that. She did... Okay. <laughs> That was the big thing that everyone was saying. Like, if you want to see her performance, that was the thing that she did before Ghostbusters because everyone was like, who is this mom in Ghostbusters? And everyone's like, <laughs> she was Proxima Midnight. Oh, wait. But if you're I, asking if you're asking who's going to win it, and it, just based on who's won all the other awards leading up to this, it's Angela Bassett. So. And that, that's this is where I'm divided because I would love for her to win. First right. of all, because she's the first MCU actor to get an acting nomination for that's an right. didn't film. Even, didn't even, no, um, so that's, that is a huge accomplishment. Um, the Jamie Lee Curtis and um, Stephanie Hsu, again, were so outstanding and everything everywhere all at once. Yep. Um, and of course, like, like we said, Jamie Lee Curtis has had a prolific career. Of course, most of her, she's mostly known for doing sort of schlock or comedy. She's the screen, um, screen queen. But like her getting this, this nomination is outstanding. Stephanie Sue mm -hmm. being sort of newer to the like to this. Um, I love um I love all these picks. Um I, I really look I just, forward to seeing yeah. Hong Ch Hong Chow and the whale this weekend. But if I had to pick the three I've seen from Everyone at Once and Black Panther, I mean just Angela Bassett. Yeah. It was such a powerful performance and very conflicting because emotionally I was conflicted of her actions, but you could not deny the performance that she was giving. And I just, oh, I, yeah, it was such a good yeah. performance. And yeah, I'm, I'm not crazy about the film, but we can talk. That's that's the whole subject. I, I thought uh, it was outstanding. She, she, uh, she did obviously did a very good job as far as you know, the MCU having an Academy Award nominated, possibly Academy Award winning performance in it is kind of crazy. I mean, Robert Downey Jr., let's just call a spade a spade, should have gotten an, an, a nomination for the first Iron Man way back in 2008, but uh, whatever, that's fine. Um, but uh, uh, like I will say, like, I love that Angela Bassett got her performance. I'm not saying, yeah. she did, like, she deserves it. But also, I'm saddened that there was, from what I heard, there was no campaign for um, Elizabeth Olsen's performance in Multiverse of Madness. Her performance was just as good as anybody else on, on this list that I have seen. It was a powerful, gripping performance for an actress. Especially given but the circumstances that was under her character. Like for me, that was a great performance and it was deserving of a nomination, but that's me. 
She's saying, if you were to ask me just based on what the wind was blowing, that there's this movie coming out called The Whale. And I think about this, I'm thinking about next year's awards already. Like, you know, who's going to know who's going to be? Um, but uh, if you'd asked me six months ago, I probably would have said Brennan Fraser was going to get the nomination and that Sadie Sink was going to get a... a uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, sad, I, I'm surprised not to see Sadie Sink on this because she, she hasn't gotten nominated going for too. anything. Nothing, yeah. no, none of the Critics' Choice or anything. So Golden Globes, but it's all been focused on Hong Chow. So um hmm. uh but whatever um the other thing is that four of these with the exception of angela bassett four of these are again first time nominees i keep i keep saying this but this is the year i noticed when i this is the year for first time acting nominees this is crazy like that i don't know that it's ever been this high a percentage of yeah. first time nominees for all in all, in all 20 acting categories so and good for everyone is, Congratulations. Yeah. yeah i agree and maybe I'm just rooting for Elizabeth Olsen because I just feel like she's a very underrated actress. Like she is, she gives every performance she does, she gives it her all and she does amazing. And she does a very powerful performance every time. I, I'm with it. you on her being an outstanding performer, but I'm not a big fan of her performance in that movie. So oh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a much bigger fan of, An of Angela Bassett's uh, role. As a parent and her motivations and her, and her acting with it, it just, yeah, I, I was all for it. But not just that, but any other things she's done in the past, like her other performances, not MC related, have been incredible and like she, I feel like she's a great up and coming actress who one day get her flowers for at least a nomination. So yeah. All right. Oh, so definitely has a chance of getting won. a nomination. Uh, best animated feature film. The nominees are Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, awesome. Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, Puss in Boots: The Last Wish, The Sea Beast, and Turning Red. Turning Red. Uh, All right. My daughter. So, I, that's loves actually this upsetting movie. to me because I I was that's I was under the impression that we had converted back away from the 2020-21 rules during COVID, where they they said, "Well, okay, fine, we'll do streaming films. Streaming films can be eligible for Oscars for this year, and then they did it again the next year." I was under the impression that they had, cut, you know, gone back to just have acts that i mean why wouldn't you i mean it's like is this the new normal now is this our streaming films going to be eligible for oscars it's kind of i mean yeah. several of these are almost exclusive to streaming not just the animated ones but several other big named ones like all quiet mm -hmm. on the western front as far as i know has only been streaming no. and it's it's a huge one um yeah, in terms of buzz right now so at least in theaters um but in terms of this list like from what i've been hearing i haven't seen most of these from what I've been hearing, Pinocchio is like the clear lead in yeah. this category with the only one that is a close contender being Puss in Boots because it kind of came out of nowhere and people weren't expecting this like spinoff sequel to be as good as it was. Um, that said, I, the Canadian in me must... Um, Torontonian. Turning red. Yeah, Torontonian. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's it, like it is it's from beginning to end just a celebration of the city um and like i it, it's the only one i want to win but i, I think i think pinocchio is is going to run away with this one unfortunately i'm, I'm surprised sea beast is on there because i've heard mixed things about that one yeah i haven't seen the sea beast or marcel the shell and with shoes on that one i've heard great pinocchio. praise for but like yeah, that's yeah but i really am going to try and see pinocchio this week somehow to go check it out i've seen turning red i've seen puss in boots i took uh, victoria see puss in boots and she she liked it. I thought it was really good too. I isn't I, Pinocchio on streaming too? I don't yeah, know. It's Netflix. Yeah. Huh, okay. It's well, that makes it easier for me to watch it then. Okay. <laughs> um, because I'm gonna I'm gonna watch that in All Quiet on the Western Front this week. Um, but I am happy to see Turning Red. My daughter loves that movie. I mean, she watches it at least once a week. Uh, just to puts it on the TV and she plays with her toys while it's on TV and she <laughs> dances to the songs and, you know, she she loves that movie. So, I have I don't have a dog in the fight yet. I will say I. I'm happy Puss in Boots is there. It's a good movie. I just, I don't know. I I guess there was a lot of options this past year for nominated for animation. I thought there was a ton of options. Like I remember th hearing that like there was a long, long list of like hmm. potentials that were very close. Um, and then Pinocchio came out and everyone was like, oh yeah, no, that one's going to win. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know either way. I feel like, I'd have to look up the list again, maybe, and give a different opinion. I'll maybe drop in the comments. I can't think of any of the other ones off the top of my head, but I do think that like this was a category where there was a lot of potentials um, well, until Pinocchio, and then oh, I would have nominated Strange World over Puss in Boots. I love Strange World. Um, that one unfortunately did not get a lot of love. Um, like no one went to bad. see it, and the marketing <laughs> was terrible for it. So yeah, 
Um, um, I definitely, I love Strange World. I like, um, well, I would say Puss in Boots is better than Lightyear. Um, yeah, Lightyear was. It was mid. good. It wasn't. It wasn't. You know, it was right. mid. It was. It was fine, but it, like, it's not offensive. It's just sort of. It. It exists. And I understand so the bad guys like, didn't get nominated like... or Super Pets, but I enjoyed the hell out of both of those. So. <laughs> There's this like one guy movies. last year who was just seeming. He's like, "This is all rigged for Disney. The, the it airs on ABC for crying out loud. It's all rigged for Disney. It's not. A, it's not a real award. They just give it to Disney because it's, it's Disney. Like, no, you're an idiot. Um, yeah, right. And this year, uh, two of the three only. Oh, two of the three. Um, the three of the four, I think, uh, of Disney animated films: Lightyear, Turning Red, and. Um, Strange World. So two of two of the three are not nominated. So and it's gonna go to Pinocchio. So one one thing I'm always thinking about now for this year. Now now Disney's Pinocchio was live action, but I find it hilarious mm. that Pinocchio is mainly a well, I mean, it's not a Disney IP because it's it's a no. public domain. Carlo Collodi no. wrote the book, yeah. Yeah, but but I just love that a Pinocchio movie that wasn't produced by Disney is getting more praise for the one that was, and that one was shit <laughs> it's i've not seen so it but bad. i like it literally says on the top of the wikipedia page on the header it's like blah 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 received hor like horrendous reviews from critics and has been labeled one of the worst movies ever made and it's robert pretty zemeckis bad. yeah pretty bad zemeckis but... should stay away from animation he doesn't do well with animation oh uh, god no josh and i will have a, a knockout drag out brawl over over beowulf like, I yeah. think Beowulf's a fucking awesome movie. I, and yeah, I, I was thinking I, Polar Express, but... <laughs> I, okay, I like no, Polar I Express. love Polar Express. I I love watching that one. I'll give it that. I like that one. Um, all right, so let's move on, James. Why don't you go ahead yep, with... This is your this is your category now, J uh, J Josh. This yeah, this yeah. is my favorite time. category. This is my one I always look forward to. Cinematography. We've got All Quiet on the Western Front <laughs> with James Friend. I've heard that. Cinematography um, is amazing. Bardo, Fo False Chronicles of the Handful of Truths. No, uh, Darius Con Conji, sure. Uh, Elvis, Mandy Walker, Empire of Light, Roger Deakins, oh, and Tar Florian Hoffmeister. Nice. So, so this Roger is a Deakins. shocker. There's some snubs. The if you were going off what the cinematographer cinematographer society nominations were, there's a big lot of hype for the Batman this year. Yeah, there's a lot that, of hype yeah. for the Batman and and um and Top Gun Maverick. And both I was going to say Top Gun Maverick was the one that I was hoping would end up in this category because <clears throat> I don't know that they did anything like super different than usual, but just trying to film planes and the situations that they were in is a very difficult and complicated process. And on that technical level itself, like it's been done before, but I think they took it to a whole new level in this film. And I think based on that, I wish it had gotten a, a category or a, a nomination that said, I haven't seen these other films, so I don't know how well they mm -hmm. were shot, but um that was one i was really hoping would be in this category yeah and i'm really i will say that's my biggest snub was uh greg fraser not getting it for the batman because to me that to me was i mean so i uh, uh granted i haven't seen all quiet on the Western front or bardo um or empires like but i mean of course i'm a roger deacons fan who isn't um but just the batman cinematography was just dripping with beauty yeah no and it was outstanding i just i ooze over every scene in that film because of just the natural light the shadows the comp the uh, the the uh and the that greg fraser is on fire right now he could like he's kind of the new uh, roger deakins i mean he literally took over roger deakins yeah. post in the films of denis Villeneuve and won an oscar for it um for dune and he's he's just on he's like he's in terms it's like yeah, he's on fire right now as a cinematographer. If you were to compare him to like an actor, it'd be like you know fucking John Travolta coming out with Pulp Fiction or something. Like he he's a big <laughs> deal right now. Um, but um, and the Batman franchise has a history of being nominated for cinematography. Um, because yeah. uh, Batman Forever, Batman Begins, and The Dark Knight were all nominated. And something about shooting a guy in a bat costume at night. Uh, just lends itself it just to good works. Well, it's it's <laughs> not just like the use of shadow, the use of color, like th that for a Batman movie that's like super undersaturated. The use of color in that film is fascinating. Oh yeah, you see some of those stills, and it's just it's stunning to look at. My favorite um, still of last year is the bird's eye shot of Batman with the flare, walking mm, the people through, through the, the water through the water. That yeah. is my favorite shot of last year, like hands down. Like I just. I want that shot as like a poster. It's, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. So, I mean, I just, I, I am sad that it got snubbed, but then again, I haven't seen all these. So 
I always love to play the game that my friend Casey always says is, you know, yeah, they got snubbed, but who would you replace for them? Mm-hmm. So I can't make that judgment call until I've seen all of them. Mm-hmm. Well, but, the, um, yeah, and I don't know who's going to win. I think this is anyone's game at this point. I don't know who won the cinematographer, um, cinematographer society, um, award, but, uh, just based on hype or anything else I've heard, I mean, who knows? It might be Roger Deakins. He might, you know, he's kind of funny. He went from being the guy who is known as like never winning an Oscar, like the curse of Roger Deakins. Then I might be getting his third. So, I mean, good for him. No one deserves it more. Right. I mean, I'm, I haven't, like I said, I, I actually haven't heard much about Empire's Light. I heard it's not a very good movie, but it's a Roger Deakins movie, so it's going to get nominated. Um, <laughs> it's not nominated for anything else. Spoiler alert. Certainly not for Best Picture or Actress or anything. So it's not, from what I've heard, it's not very good. But I mean, it's literally oh. called Empire of Light. You It's, it's going to get nominated for cinematography. All right. Are you looking so at let's who won move the, uh... forward here, everybody. Okay. Uh, again, I, I love the list. I I definitely need to see all those before I can make a judgment call. Uh, whose turn is it? Is it James's? I just went, so James I think it's right. Okay. okay, costume design. Uh, I don't think anyone has a dog in this fight, but uh, uh, uh Babylon, Mary Zofries, Black Panther, definition. Wakanda Forever, Ruth Carter, Elvis, Catherine Martin, uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once for Shirley Carada. And Mrs. Harris goes to Paris for Jenny Bevan. A lot of uh, this is the opposite of the acting categories. If you know your costume designers, these are all superstars with the exception of um, Shirley Carada. This is her first nomination. Um, and so, uh, some, of the, some of the pieces from that movie, um, you, you wouldn't think it because most, much of the movie, movie is sort of like mundane, ordinary people ordinary um, people in a laundromat. Yeah, but but you, you go to the other universes and it's like some of the costumes are just a astonishingly beautiful Mm -hmm. um and like complicated and uh interesting and um i'm just beautiful of course elvis you know yeah of course because first of all it's a period piece second of all it's you know a baz lerman sort of like over the top production kind of thing um so of course production design costume design is going to be yeah um black panther of course like just Stunning, beautiful costume designs for all of the Wakandans. And then you, you've got the Talakan now who have their own designs and all that. And um, <laughs> I haven't seen Babylon or Miss Harris Goes to Paris, but I've uh, seen Babylon those three Those and... three alone, I can see any one of them sort of running away with it. But Right. I've seen Babylon. The costumes are really great. Um, I mean, it's set back and it's a period piece, so it, it, it fits the time well, but the... The movie's pretty crazy. I will say that it's yeah. It, it wasn't. Uh, I didn't things. get a lot of good reviews. Um, like it's you not know, getting good reviews. Might... And to and to be fair, it's a crazy movie. I liked it, but it just it it's not up to par from what I know. Damien Chazelle is capable of as far as the structure oh, I, of the story yeah. and the impact of the story. It just it wasn't there. I just I'm, mm, it's, I'm shocked uh, and sad, but yeah the as this you guys guy know I say Whiplash is the be- you know is one of the best movies of last year of the last decade of all, of all time yeah uh but uh as you guys know I've stayed in touch with uh Steve Moore who's the production sound guy on a lot of Damien Chazelle movies and um uh he did last year he, he did uh well he did Ghostbusters Afterlife and and uh and then last year he did uh Don't Worry Darling and um Babylon and he kept talking about Babylon. He kept talking to me about Babylon. Like, it's like, oh my God, it's going to be so good. I can't tell you. I can't tell you anything, but it's going to be so good. And so it's just so crazy. He said it was one of the ch- most challenging movies he's ever worked on and getting the sound for it with all the shit going on. It's just, like, just so much shit. It's, it's like, pretty there's chaotic. Dust, there's, there's, there's wind, there's, you know, all the. But uh, yeah, I have to I have email him again. I haven't talked to him in a while. But uh, but yeah, the costume design, I don't think any one of us, you know, is a huge costume design nerd, but I, I know the, I know the names. I know the names. Yeah. Catherine Martin, she does. She's probably nominated uh, for she does. Well, she's Boz Lerman's wife, first of all, but she also uh, does both the production design and the costume design for all those movies. So she pulls double duty and she's won multiple Oscars on both fronts. So she, you know, anyway, a little cool. fun tip. Right, let's there. move on here to directing. We've got Martin McDonough for the Banshees. Everything Everywhere All at Once for Daniel Kwan and Daniel Shiner- Shiner- Shinert. Shinert? Yeah. There we go. They call themselves the Daniels. And mm-hmm. Steven Spielberg for the Fablemans. 
Todd Field for Tar, and then Ruben Oslin for Triangle of Sadness. Now, is Triangle of Sadness is that a one of the um, non-English speaking films that got nominated? Because I've never heard. I'm of not it. sure. I haven't ever heard what I, I I keep hearing about it. My friend John saw it, which is kind of funny because he doesn't go see a lot of movies. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, but here's a lot of uh, first time nominees. Not necessarily first time nominees overall like todd field's been nominated for screenplay i think multiple times he's done a lot of little films over the years that have gotten a lot of uh a lot of praise but this is his first directing martin mcdonough of course won the academy award for um best uh uh short film many years ago for a little film he did called six shooter and he was nominated for screenplay for in bruges was nominated for screenplay for um uh three billboards but this is his first uh directing uh, so this is a lot with the exception of Steven Spielberg. These are all first time, at least directing uh, nominations. Uh, so, again, this is the year for first timers. It's crazy. Uh, but think, Steven Spielberg I, is going to going to get it. like it's it's going to yeah, it's going to be crazy. We'll see. Yeah, um, I'm we, we, we talked about uh, last but... year how much um, the how much the Oscars love Hollywood. Yeah. And uh, like the Fablemans isn't getting a lot of attention in that. Like it's got a few nominations, but like some other ones are getting a lot more attention. I think Ryan pointing out that Steven Spielberg is going to run away with this one just based on this being, you know, a celebration of all it's, uh, it's a celebration him, of himself, but um, <laughs> like he's such a darling within the industry and like so beloved. And um, again, this being a love letter to film, like if you've seen the last scene of that movie, it is 100% a love letter to them to, to film film history and all that. And I, I think that that's, that puts it ahead. That said, I'd really like to see the Daniels win for everything everywhere all at once. Yep. So I, think I, 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 I stand corrected. Ahead. The triangle of sadness is an English language film. It actually won the Palme d'Or at Cannes. So and got that doesn't A's matter, movie. Josh, the only one that matters, the one that is the ultimate tell. And I, I know this because Roger Ebert told me so, not personally, but Roger Ebert was the one that pointed this out many years ago uh, in the paper. And uh, it's, it's it's Toronto. Whoever wins Toronto wins Best Picture, like like 80 percent of the time. Um, and uh, Fableman's won Toronto. Fableman won the Golden Globe. Fableman won, um, you know, a uh, bunch of stuff. So sorry. Right. Um, Where? What What place? Toronto. Toronto. Thank Canada, you. a thank you. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> but it's yeah, James's backyard. Whoever wins there, and and so and that, and not just saying he's going to win because I want him to, or because it's a celebration. I just I'm just going off of what the uh, what all the uh, you know sort of mm. stuff is showing us at this point, um, so, which is kind of crazy because uh, he is 76 years old. He has three Oscars. He won three Oscars all in the 90s. Um, and in one night at the age of 76, he's going to double his Oscar count. He's going to win three more, um, in March. He's going to get best picture director and screenplay this time. So, uh, crazy. kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. Uh, James, just as a little side note here for everybody indulge me, but, uh, whenever I eventually come to visit you, cause I really want to go to the Toronto film festival. Um, you need to introduce me to a Mountie. I've always wanted to meet one. I mean, I don't know any personally, but um, <laughs> Brendan Fraser. <laughs> to be to be fair, if you come to Toronto, there won't be many Mounties because they're they're federal, so yeah. they don't usually police Toronto itself. But what I place? can I I Toronto, but I can find um, mounted police because the the, the Toronto uh, city service police actually do ride mounted. And yeah, of my course, goal is to um, have all three of us go to Toronto International Film Festival and then go, uh, you know, shack up with, at James's apartment so I'll sleep on the floor on like you know. There, there's actually. not much floor space here. You guys are gonna have to get a hotel. <laughs> well, um, at any rate, uh, now future Academy Award winner Brendan Fraser was famously the Mountie Dudley Do Right, oh, and uh, it's, a, it's a super uh, non non uh, sequitur. But um, you guys ever watch Dickie Roberts, former child star? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. With David yeah, Spade. Have where Brennan Fraser plays himself and he's like there's because there's a running joke with him like he, no one says his name right so he does a he does a favor for Dickie Roberts and he goes oh I love it I love Brennan Fraser and he goes Fraser yeah uh, and <laughs> I just you saw did a clip it wrong of, for, yeah I, I just you did saw it wrong a clip for Greg Fraser as well Greg it's Greg Fraser by the way just thought I'd point that out. I saw a clip of Brendan the other day saying Fraser it rhymes with razor the problem is that there's there was a like ten year show on TV called Frasier 
that everyone doesn't understand the difference in the spelling and the pronunciation. So everyone calls it Frasier, but he's very clear that it rhymes with razor, like shaving your face. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and move on. Um, do we even do we want to talk to about the documentary? documentary? Yeah. Cause yeah. I'm not, I don't uh, like, I'm, I'm excited that, you know, Canada usually has a good representation in these. I don't know any of these. And, um, I, I, well, yeah. I mean, James let's move on. Anyway, this category, Sam. yeah, the, the category after that is sort of kind of my category anyway. Film editing. Yeah, let's yes. move on to that one. We can move on from documentary short film and documentary feature. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see them all before the Oscars. Then um, Kansas City, like a lot of big cities, they do um, at a lot of different places. They'll give you like you pay 10 bucks and you see all the shorts in like a time in one day, like animated short, action short, mm -hmm. whatever, or uh, live action short and animated short. So I'm looking forward to those. But yeah, James, why don't you go on to your category, film yes. editing. Uh, our nominees are The Banshees of Inisherin, uh, Mikhail E.G. Nielsen, Elvis, Matt Villa, and Jonathan Redmond, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Paul Rogers, Tar, Monica Willie, Wheelie, I don't know, and uh, Top Gun Maverick, Eddie Hamilton. Nice. So uh, again, a lot. Four four of these guys are first time nominees. Eddie Hamilton's done a lot of stuff. He's never been nominated. Um, and uh, uh, Michael E. G. Nielsen won it, um, twenty twenty for Sound of Metal. Um, mm -hmm. but other than him, everyone here is the first time. Uh, a couple thoughts on this. Uh, one is that I'm really always surprised because uh, I, I'm very. That's the least surprising thing that Top Gun Maverick is nominated. Because they tend to give it to whatever film that they like that's the most kinetic, the most action-y. And if you have a really good action film, uh, that's guaranteed a film editing nomination. Um, but uh, um, uh, they, I'm always surprised when they give it to these uh, nominations to these little melodramas. Like, yeah, The Banshees is like uh, is a great, great film, but is it? I mean, it's, that's, that's what's, the funny what's thing so about, great about that's the funny thing about editing. Um, th there's a rule about visual effects. Um, the category for visual effects is that um, the nomination or the winner isn't usually the one who's the best visual effects. It's the one with the most visual effects. And I feel like a lot of the editing movie, the movies that people like kind of gravitate towards in terms of editing are the ones that has the most editing as opposed to good editing necessarily. Mm -hmm. And good editing is editing that you don't notice. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of the best editing is in drama stuff because it's, you know, it, it's, it. it's, it's the, the, the art of editing is, you know, holding on a moment or um, it's not just about like the kinetic energy of cutting, but it's like there, there, there are different things to consider in there. Um, and, and I think that those cat like those, something like Banshees of in, 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 in a sharing could be, <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. I don't know, but like there, there is the potential for it to be a excellently edited film that said, um, you know, it's no secret that I love Top Gun Maverick. Yep. <clears throat> that film meant a lot to me personally, and um, I would like to see it sweep every category it's in. That's with that said, though, I really think the editing and everything everywhere all at once. Um, it, is it is one that the kinetic editing was so technically well done. Um, the pacing of it, um, the I love action the within aspect it. of the editing a lot. Yeah, the collision, the the moving between worlds and whatnot. Yeah. It, it's so masterfully done. And it is one where the editing stands out, but it's in a way that's like, it, it pulls you into the movie more as opposed to like, usually when editing stands out, it's because it's poorly done. This one is a celebration of just how skillful an editor can craft a story, um, especially one as like chaotic and um, so bizarre small, as everything uh, everywhere all at once. Yeah, small thing, James, real quick. So I recently uh, rewatched the first Hunger Games, and <laughs> as far as edit, like I was so ha I was so mad because I feel like uh, to me that I feel like that's the best of the trilogy. But the reason I'm bringing it up is I got so angry because at the very beginning I had noticed an editing error that I didn't notice before, which was there's a scene where she's saying something, but the ADR is not there because what she's saying audio is not matching what's saying on her mouth. The, the thing and with so ADR is they don't necessarily always, they, they try to match the ADR to final picture, not recut picture to final ADR necessarily. Like the, the preference would be to recut the picture to final ADR, but the purpose of ADR is you're replacing dialogue. So yeah, you're you doing it, you're doing it after the you don't, picture's someone doesn't notice that, you know what I mean? Like Morbius did that twice and that, it was blatantly obvious. Well, Morbius like, did a lot of things, man. Like Tyrese's face was literally in frame and you see his mouth moving, but what's being said is not there. 
Yeah, lip, lip flap is a very common problem. Um, you would be surprised how often they get away with it not being done correctly just because, A, the cut needs to go out, mm-hmm. B, there's no time or money for it, and um, C, just sometimes it's easy to miss that stuff. Right. And you, you'll watch something like 30, 40 times, and you're, you're, your mind has become so used to it, you're not seeing the little details and whatnot, whereas someone with a fresh eye seeing the movie for the first time will catch that lip flap. Um, it happens to editors all the time. Um, I, I, I don't know. To me, in terms of these films, I, I think Everything Everywhere All at Once is going to be my pick, but I would be very, very happy with Top Gun winning this. I'm right there with you. Uh, mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's go and move on. Do we want to do international film feature? Yeah. I mean, might as well. Yep. Uh, you want me to do it? I'll do... Yep, all Quiet on the Western Front, which I think is the clear front runner. Oh yeah. Uh, Argentina, nineteen eighty-five. Close. EO mm-hmm. and the Quiet Girl. So very interesting. So, you got Germany, Belgium, poor, um, Poland, Ireland, and Argentina. All of the like four out of the five are like all within the region of Europe, which is very interesting. And then Argentina, of course, South America. But yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I have. I'm so looking forward to seeing this this week. Um, but I've heard All Quiet on the Western Front is the clear front runner for this. Yeah, country. it's interesting because uh, that I mean I think this is the first German language version of the of the because they made the movie in 1930, yep. which won the 1930 Best Picture at the 1930 Academy Awards, um, and then they made the TV version in the 70s with John Boy from the Waltons, and that's the version that I've seen. That's the only reason I know how that story ends um, and everything is uh, watching that in in class at eighth in eighth grade. Um, so, um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting that it's... they're doing that film in Germany. I, I'm wondering if it's from the German perspective. Yeah. I don't um, know. well, the story is, is the, from the German perspective. I mean, is it? Okay. I, have, I haven't seen it. Like yeah, usually it's about when, German soldiers in world war one. So okay. Usually, it's... usually when you see an American production of a war movie, mm-hmm. it's about Raha, mm-hmm. you know, America is the greatest thing in, to ever fucking touch this planet but like seeing war movies especially from the first and second world war from other perspectives is always interesting to me so seeing this uh, not not just not just about the german perspective but from germany itself to be fair it's world war it's world war one if it was world war two that'd be a different story nazis bad uh but world war one's a little bit more uh, (laughs) i mean the germans uh, were not nice people in the first world war either so they were were pretty bad people uh, i mean they were worse in world war two but yeah yeah, that's why everyone like you know you paint a pan swastika on someone, your all your sympathy goes out the window, and it's like you get like which is amazing because Das Boat is a film about Nazis, and then you're supposed to sympathize with them. I've never seen Das Boat, but that's the crazy thing. But no, um, uh, All Quiet on the Western Front was a novel by a German author named Eric Maria Remarque, who, for the record, uh, fled Nazi Germany and did not become a Nazi, so good for him. Uh, but uh, before before Nazi Germany ever was a thing, he published this novel about his experiences or based on his experiences in World War One. It became a bestseller internationally. America made uh, English language movie out of it, uh, which won Best Picture. Uh, but it is absolutely one hundred percent about German soldiers in World War One. So. Um, yeah, very cool. But like the, back to my point is that like it's not just about German soldiers; it's German soldier. It's it's Germans telling the story of German soldiers, because mm-hmm. usually All Quiet on the Western Front is you know right. an American made movie. So like I think that them having their own voice in this is what makes it interesting to me. Yeah. Again, I haven't mm-hmm. seen it, so I can't say if it, like that has an effect on it. But that on alone Netflix. is fascinating to me. It. All right, so let's move on. Uh, makeup and hairstyles will be quick. I don't think a lot of us have a big dog fight in this, mm-hmm. but uh, I'm happy to see some of these people on the list here. So we got All Quiet on the Western Front of Heinrich Merker and Linda. Woo. Oh, I don't know. I think we need to say all the names. <laughs> a lot of syllables there. Um, I apologize, Hammer-over. but The Batman, Naomi Don, Mike Moreno, and Mike Fontaine, which is good to see the Batman get something. Uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Camille Friend, and Joel Harlow. Elvis. Mike Coolier, Jason Bar, uh, Baird, and Aldo Signoretti. Signoretti? Signoretti. Yeah. And then finally, The Whale, Adrian um, Moray, Judy Marat. Chen, and Anne Marie Bradley. So, well, we knew two of these were going to be on the list. We knew that The Batman and The Whale were shoe ins. Yeah. I mean, The Batman, the transformation of Colin Farrell alone is oh, God, an astonishing so work in makeup. Yeah. Um, 
but like again this category is usually about like the biggest most bombastic so either they're mm-hmm. going to be you know either the whale is going to carry because of um you know the makeup on brendan fraser and how important like if he's going to win i think yeah. that'll carry that but i like to me all this is the front runner although i haven't seen all quiet on the western front it yeah. being a period piece that also is a very big factor in this category um glad to see you know black panther wakanda forever but i don't think it's i i, I don't think it's you know a winner in this one i i, I think it's down to either the whale or elvis personally uh i'm there with you i, I would think I don't know. Batman for me, like, yeah, for Colin Farrell as Penguin, like, I didn't realize it was Colin Farrell in that trailer until someone told me. And I was like, to when, like, I hadn't seen, like, at that time before The Whale, I hadn't seen makeup that good since Gary Oldman in Darkest Hour. Like, makeup in uh, uh, Vice. What? Christian Bale and Vice. Christian Bale and Vice. Uh, I, I feel like Darkest Hour was better. I mean, it was good. Don't get me wrong. It was good. But I don't know this one uh, like it was just so I don't know it was it was incredible, but I don't know which one's gonna win. I would pull for Elvis just because the makeup and hairstyles is amazing in that for sixties and seventies. Uh, but we'll see. I was not expecting anyone to say anything other than the whale, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, again, the Batman was outstanding makeup job, oh, but yeah. like Elvis again, the big bombastic ones are often darlings in these categories and these like design category so makeup and hairstyle and costuming all that stuff um yeah but so are period pieces so like any of these could be up there but i really think elvis or whale just on their momentum alone yeah uh, next up we've got music original score all quiet on the western front with Faulkner, uh bertelman babylon with justin hurwitz banshees of inishirin with carter burwell everything everywhere all at once son lux and the Fablemans with John Williams. Awesome, Ryan. So this I, is your favorite category. I, I, I'm not seeing a lot of like uh, I don't know. Uh, I love seeing. I, I haven't seen any of these I've films. Him. Babylon won the Golden Globe, so that might be the front runner. Um, if John Williams wins his, this is his 53rd uh, nomination. He has he Jeez. owns five Oscars, um, so maybe they are, he'll get his sixth. The 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 Oscars are also very sort of when someone's going, you know out and like williams is obviously this was supposed to be his last film he's apparently doing one more but um indiana jones was supposed to be his last film and he's he's then then you sent me the thing on that what he said he's backtracking his comments about about uh but like he's he's clearly he's not gonna have many more opportunities and i think that considering (laughs) that i think that's why anthony hopkins had that upset that one year is because Mm. you know we're probably not gonna have him for too long um, and I, I think John Williams is unfortunately in that situation as well, where, you know, he's getting older. We're not going to get too many more films out of him. And the Fablemans is kind of, you know, iconic and darling and very much different. Like I, <clears throat> it, it, it's a throwback to Spielberg's youth, but like, I, I feel like it's not, you know, sort of John Williams typical kind of score. So, yeah. um, it would be interesting to see that the rest of them, I don't really have much to say. Like, I don't even remember the score and everything everywhere all at once. Same. And I haven't seen the other ones, but I, I, to, to me, this is John Williams category. Mm. Yeah. All right. Yep. Ryan, we'll go on to song. Oh, wait, can we talk about the heart attack certain fans had when the Batman didn't even make the short list? I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. No, but it's such a wonderful four note. Bah, I bah, love bah, that bah, score. Bah, I love bah, that score. Me too. I know you hate it. I love that score. Okay. Bah, 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 bah. There, I did it. I, give me an Oscar. <laughs> Ba da ba ba, um, but uh, Sometimes okay. Simple is impactful. Yep. Um, music, original song. Uh, tell uh, applause. They put the song name first, which is right. okay. Tell it like a woman. This for the song applause. Never heard of that, but it is a Diane Warren. Diane Warren is uh, we'll take this opportunity. Uh, if anyone here doesn't know, uh, is she's this is her fourteenth nomination. She wow. is, uh, yeah, she is, she, Jerry Bruckheimer kind of, she was her goal. He, she was his golden goose for a while. Every Jerry Bruckheimer production had a Diane Warren co- composition. Uh, uh, 98 was Armageddon, of course, had um, uh, I Don't Want to Miss a Thing. 2001, Pearl Harbor had uh, There You'll Be. Um, a lot of other stuff. Uh, she Her career goes all the way back to uh, We Belong or whatever it's called from Mannequin. Um, she's done, she did the opening uh 
uh, theme song from Star Trek Enterprise. Uh, she, and lately she's been getting these nominations or continuing to rack them up for films that don't know, like, again, you haven't heard of, like, like last year or two years ago, there was a movie called Four Good Days and we're scrolling through, um, you know, uh, the, the nominees and we're like, oh, Four Good Days, what is that? And it's the same thing this year. It's like, she's, she's being nominated again. She's kind of like John Williams and they, they will nominate her for whatever she does or Meryl Streep. Um, <laughs> and it's so so it's the movie apparently called tell it like a woman and there's a song called applause and it was written by diane warren and she gets the nomination uh the other the nominees are uh hold my hand from top gun maverick for lady gaga and blood pop that is please wow. don't put that on an oscar people i don't want there to be an oscar statuette in existence that has the name blood pop engraved on it like just <laughs> fucking use your birth name for crying out loud um lift me up from black panther wakanda forever for song. Thames, Rihanna, Ryan Coogler, Ludwig Gorenson. I didn't know Ryan Coogler was involved in writing that song. Um, but uh, Rihanna, first time, uh, first Academy Award nomination for Rihanna. Academy Award nominee, Rihanna. Uh, Natsu Natsu from RRR. This is getting a lot of buzz. This is like the most I've ever heard of a, of a Bollywood film uh, making making waves in America. Uh, Natsu Natsu from RRR. Uh, music by M.M. Kirvani and Chandra Bros. And this is a life from everything, everywhere, all at once for Ryan Lott, David Byrne, and Mitski. And yep, and Mitski. David so Byrne. I, I will David be, Byrne is involved in that. Real quick, I will be honest and frank here. When I first saw Everywhere All Everything Everywhere All at Once, I knew it was a special film. I loved it a lot, but I didn't realize it would be like this many Oscar nominated kind of you know what I mean? Like you see a movie and you're blown away and you love it, but then you're like, there's something you don't like expect here, like, the Oscars you know, to reciprocate. I, like, that. This, the kind of movie it is, you're like, mm -hmm. I don't see a good nomination, even though it deserves it. But all of a sudden, it's getting like everything, and I'm so happy to see it. Yeah, it's I don't funny know, because I had the opposite experience where, like, as soon as it came out, it was getting all kinds of buzz, and everybody I was, every like movie um, content creator that I follow was saying, this is going to be a major Oscar contender. This is going to win all kinds of categories. Um, that said, I don't remember this song from it. Um, the only and if I remember and, and I again, Top the Gun, I don't remember the, end the, of the credits. The, the Top Gun that. song, I don't remember either. Yeah. Um, Lift Me Up was a beautiful song. Yeah, I kind of um, love that song. I would be happy with any of those three winning. I haven't seen RRR. Um, I'm hearing a lot of controversy because it didn't get more nominations, but apparently, um, they it wasn't submitted for a lot of categories. Mm. Yeah. Um, it, like one of the big ones that it, it, we've already, I think we've already passed it was the foreign film one. Um, apparently your country has to submit. Huh. Not, that's why it's listed. When, when we look at the categories, it says the film and the country, not the people behind the film. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, oh, India never. So submitted. India, in, no, because you can only submit one and India submitted something else huh. as their mm -hmm. consideration. And a lot of people are upset because as Ryan pointed to, RR is making huge waves in America right now um, for just like how just like a lot of people love it. I haven't seen it, so I can't say one way or the other, but like streaming. Let me find out. And um, then of course, you've mentioned Diane Warren. Like, I mean, any of these could be a, I, I yeah, I don't have a dog in this fight, but like I, I could see I any just, of these uh, winning for different reasons. Oh, so R -R -R Top Gun, is Lady Gaga, they had, they had big shoes to fill in Top Gun because Top Gun is known for that the for original movie has not one but two of the uh, most iconic uh, movie uh, songs uh, ever ever composed. Um, yep. Does it have two? Wait, I'm having a brain fart. Yes, Danger Zone. There, there's and, Danger Zone. Oh, take and my breath away. Take my breath away. Yeah. Um, there's, so, there's um playing with the boys. With there's the boys. um like it, that that is a stacked um soundtrack. That is one of the soundtrack. That is the only soundtrack my household had besides Ghostbusters growing up because my dad <laughs> loved Top Gun so much. So um, there are big shoes to fill. <laughs> and Lady Gaga, <laughs> you know, did what she'd so uh, but uh, Josh, yeah, hold, let's hold have you I'll let's have you do the honors. Hand, lift me up or this is life. I'd be happy with those. Let's have you do the honors, Josh, for best motion picture of All the year. Right. Best motion picture. Better you got... than Warren Beatty. All quiet on the Western. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> like that was so <laughs> bad. Sometimes I rewatch that because it's just so funny. Do you remember how, where you, where you were? Because I remember where you were when that happened. Yeah, you I, you were at work. You had to work, and you yeah. were like, "Text me updates." And I was I texted you, uh, uh whatever, La, uh, La La Land. La 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 La
<laughs> and you're like, stop fucking around. Stop dicking with me. And I'm like, no, this something historic is happening here. Anyway, yep. best I picture. remember I wanted that year. I wanted um uh midnight uh sorry, not midnight moonlight. Um, moonlight to win. Like I was rooting for it to win, and then I had Lolly and I'm like, oh. Then you're like, no, wait, moonlight. We're like, what, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> anyway, okay, best picture, all quiet on the western front. Uh Malte Okay. Grunert. Grunert. Yeah. Wow. Holy shit. Avatar, The Way of Water, James Cameron, and John Landau. Mm. Holy shit. That's a big surprise. Uh, Banshees, The Banshees. I got to fill a spot. Uh, Graham uh, Broadbent, uh, Ben, or sorry, Pete uh, Zernan, and uh, Martin McDonough. Okay. Elvis, good to see that. Uh, ba- Boz Lerman, which I'm sure surprised the hell out of Ryan because he thinks Boz Lerman is just a horrible filmmaker. <laughs> Uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Daniel Kwan, Daniel uh, Schernert, uh, I can't pronounce it. I'm sorry, Shin, I can't, it's bad. And Jonathan Wang, and Fablemans, wow. Uh, Fablemans, uh, Christy, Ma- um, Krieger. Krieger, and Steven Spielberg, and Tony Kushner, Tar, which is getting a lot of buzz too. Todd Phil, um, Tom, Todd Field. Alexandria Melchan and Scott Lambert. Top Gun Maverick, awesome. Tom Cruise. Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. He produced this. <laughs> Is that his first nomination? What? Is that his first Jerry nomination? Bruckheimer. For Best Picture, yeah. But Jerry oh, wow. Bruckheimer. Jerry Bruckheimer, Guys, too. Holy this shit. This big. Jerry Bruckheimer is now an Academy Award nominee. That's, That's huge. Insane. That's this. Like I said, what have I been saying this whole time? This is the year for first-time nominees. Jerry Bruckheimer has never... Been nominated for an Academy wow. Award. So, so now Ryan has a dog in the fight of Top Gun winning Best Picture. Right. I just no, I'm I'm he just happy Jerry for Bruckheimer. him. He's not going to win it, but that's just crazy. No, I got to tell you the story real quick. Um, in two, it's not really a story, but you guys know the story. Uh, in 2001, Jerry Bruckheimer sat down. I imagine he sat down. I want to win an Oscar. I want to. <laughs> I want to at least get a nomination. I I I've been producing popcorn flicks for so long. I just want to do something critically. So I'm going to produce two movies, man. I'm going to produce two movies in this year, 2001, that are going to be my Oscar bait. And the two movies were Black Hawk Down and Pearl Harbor. <laughs> the former came extremely close to getting a Black uh, Hawk best Down is a Black Hawk Down a lot of film. Black Hawk Down was nominated for Best Director, which if you know how this works, back in the days when there was only five nominees for Best Picture, there was four of the nominees for Best Picture were nominated for Best Director. And then the the one other Best Director nominee was kind of viewed, at, or at least I always viewed it as sort of like the honorary sixth uh, Best Picture nominee. So Ridley Scott was nominated for Best Director for, for Black Hawk Down. So it was kind of like the honorary sixth Best Picture nominee, yeah. right? Black Hawk Down was, it was a, by, by all accounts, I haven't seen it, Probably. but by all accounts was an extraordinary film. Probably should have gotten a Best Picture nomination. The other one, Pearl Harbor, was his other attempt at being like <laughs> making an Oscar bait. Literally has a song about it in Team America World Police <laughs> about, about how much that. So anyway, I'm happy for Jerry Bruckheimer. He is now finally. Is that who you meant when you said is that his first nomination? No, I meant yeah. Tom Cruise. Oh no, and God, Tom no. Cruise. acting. He's acting. He's gotten four nominations. No, but I mean for, for producing, acting. it's just shocking. for producing. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know he'd gotten an acting. His, I mean, it's Tom Cruise. Like. Uh, Jerry Maguire. Uh, he's nominated. Right. Yeah, to Jerry Maguire. Before that, uh, born on the Fourth of July, and then um, he, uh, Magnolia. So he's this. Yeah. yeah he's okay, three. Magnolia. I see. Uh, so last two we have Triangle of Sadness. Uh, Eric Hemmer, uh, Hemmendorf, and Felipe Bober, Bober, and then Women Talking. Okay, that's the first one. Um, Dee Gardner Dee and Jeremy Gardner, Kleiner are like Jeremy are, Kleiner yeah. and Francis. Francis McDormand is legendary. I mean, but like, no, but Dee Dee Gardner and Jeremy Kleiner just rack up Best Picture nominations. They 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 won it twice. I think they won it for Moonlight and something else. But they're they're ridiculous. They just they every year they're like, give me a Best Picture nomination, <laughs> like <laughs> so. Yeah, this is quite the list. I'm just I'm shocked. I mean, it's a great film. Don't be wrong. It is a, fin- a fantastic film. But Avatar just getting. I'm like, holy shit. Okay, that was a surprise. They gotta fill the spot. <laughs> I am yeah, very happy well, Elvis. I was worried that Elvis was not going to get nominated for Best Fisher. I liked it a lot, but I feel how, like this how is... Boz, let me ask you, how Boz Lerman is it? Does Boz Lerman tone down the Boz Lerman in it? Yeah, make this, a lot. Trying to make, he does? Okay, so yeah. it's not like, what's it? Story of Elvis. I'm Elvis. <laughs> Elvis, Elvis, Elvis. Like, 
no, it's toned down a lot. Um, it's just sad that um, his daughter is not seeing this, uh, getting these nominations, because sadly, Lisa Marie Presley's passed away. Rest in peace. Um, it's just very sad. I mean, she got to see him win, uh, him win the uh, uh, Golden, Golden Globe. Globe. Yeah. For mm-hmm. for the role, which that was very happy, you know, to see, you know, her, he's, you know, have her see that. But it is very sad that she's not be able to see these accolades being done at the Academy Awards. And um, I've heard when the movie came out, contrary to all the praise it's gotten, what I heard was this is the worst performance of Tom Hanks's career. It's Tom not Hanks great. is just a caricature. It's it's, it's very caricaturish. That, he's that's had a why I was worried. Stinkers this year, huh? He had a couple stinkers this year because wasn't yeah. he in the Pinocchio, Pinocchio one as well? And Pinocchio. There was another one I think where like a man was... called Otto. No, I've I don't think that one's come out good. yet. But actually pretty good. In that one. I, I've heard that like I'm trying to remember another one, but like two really bad movies or two <laughs> really. Uh, anyway, someone yeah, someone pointed out like, look at all these a- well, look at all these elder elder actors as they get older, they're aging like fine wine. They're coming out with these these really challenging roles, and then look over at Tom Hanks. It's a me, Japan. <laughs> <laughs> so this now I want him as Mario year, he instead of Chris three. Pat. He did uh, well. He did Finch in 2021, uh, and then he did Elvis this year, Pinocchio, and A Man Called Otto for the 2022. Yeah. So Finch was 2021, which I've heard it's the, you know, whatever. Um, but no, so I'm very happy with this list. It's a lot Clearly of great he needs films. to make Turner and Hooch too. Huh? <laughs> Said Turner Clearly he needs too. to make Turner and Hooch too to get him back on track. Yeah. Yeah. Get his third uh, Oscar. So I thought I mean, this was for Tom the last one. Um, so who, what are you guys picking? If you guys had to, you know, from what you've seen. <laughs> oh, it's the Fablemans. Fablemans all all day long is gonna is gonna win it. Like I don't think that's if it if it doesn't win it, it's gonna be a big upset. Everything so. everywhere all at once. I think is what James is going for. I'm split because oh, I love oh, everything everywhere all at huh? once, but I really want Top Gun to win to yeah. just piss people off because yeah, just like there hasn't like I'm not kidding. There hasn't been a movie in a long time. Um, that made me as happy. Like, I mean, obviously, you know, Ghostbusters Afterlife was a huge win for me. Yeah. But like, the experience of seeing Top Gun Maverick, not being sure if it was going to be any good going into it, and then just being blown away by how good it was. Um, the fact that and then, and then the fact that like, a, because I grew me. up with the original, and my dad was yeah. like such a huge fan of it. My dad does not go to see movies, and I talked him into going to see this with me, and like he said, it was the best movie experience he's ever had. And he yeah. saw Star Wars in theater, so um, he's the one that got me into Star Wars. He's the one who got me into Tom Gunn. See, it's like, it's things like that. Like you guys call me Captain Hyperbole, and it's like it's it's things like that. Like James has been saying, everyone has been saying this 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 made me believe in the magic of the movies again. I had cancer, and then I saw Top Gun Maverick, and now it's gone. I mean, it's just like <laughs> it, it's. I didn't it, say that. It's just I said I, it was a great crazy. experience for me. I I know, but now, I'm just like I. I will always I, say I, that. I it. Whiplash I like it. is what got me back into loving film, but it also reinvigorated my sense of filmmaking after I got out of the military. Like Whiplash did that for me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I will always say that forever. Like I'm not going to say Tom Gunn Maverick is the best movie ever, or the even the best movie of the year. Like personally, if I was going to give it to one of these on the category in this list, it would be Everything Everywhere at Once. But mm. God, would I love Top Gun to get best if picture? If Top Gun and just wins the award off. for best picture. It will break the matrix that we are living in. <laughs> um, like to me, the only thing that would be better than that would be an MCU movie actually winning Best Picture. Right? So just to and, piss and, Martin and Scorsese off, because yes, what? it would it would piss off it would piss off the Endgame regulars. Who were... Endgame should have won. Uh, we've got a couple more guys. If you guys want to, still, we got the writing yep. ones, and we have. Uh, I do want to talk about nice. the writing ones. Yeah. So let's production design and nominees. And the two writings. Well, production design. Hello. Oh, production design. I'm sorry. Production design. All Quiet on the Western Front. Christian M. Goldbleck and Ernestine Hipper. Avatar The Way of Water. Dylan Cole and Ben Proctor and Vanessa Cole. Babylon. Florencia Martin and Anthony Carlino. Elvis. Catherine Martin and Karen Murphy and Bev Dunn. Uh, the Fablemans. Rick Carter and Karen O'Hara. So, uh, yeah. No dog in this fight. Uh, don't even Couldn't even tell you who, who would win that. But Fablemans was a really well done period piece so like I, I i think they nailed that one um i'd like I'm to see surprised that one by avatar because i figured all of it was cgi based it, it is but, CGI, still, but production, production, the design, design still needs to go into it right hmm. but the first the first avatar won that oscar and what's kind of interesting is that um 
Rick Carter, who's nominated this year for the Fablemans, um, was one of two production designers on Ava the first Avatar, along with Robert uh, Stromberg. Robert Stromberg, um, and they they won the Academy Award. They're big deals, and so when you go to make number two, do they bring them back? No, they get Dylan Cole and Ben Proctor. Who the fuck are these people? Like that's kind of amazing to me. Like we have to make a sequel to the biggest movie of all time. We bring back the the, the major league, like the 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 the, the uh, Derek Jeter of uh, of uh, production design, or do we get Ben Proctor? It's okay. Let's, you got Ben Proctor. Okay, good for him. I guess he got a nomination out of it. But uh, that's kind of I didn't I didn't realize that 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 those were who the production designers were on uh, huh. on that movie. But anyway, you know I pay attention to that. So yeah, I, I even looked up Dylan Cole's name and it came up a Tennessee Titans player. So. <laughs> I try to look up what else he's done, but it, it just brings up a Tennessee shift. Titans play. Okay, well, let's move forward here, guys. Uh, let's go to. You want to do sound? sound. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I love sound. All but right. We're, so we're, James, this is go the third year one? now. This is the third year now that they've combined uh, sound and effects, editing, and mixing, and so it's just about it. <laughs> the overall, yeah, this is the overall sound of the movie. All together, everything is like no, have both have sound effects and sound mixing, but whatever. They're completely anyway. different. Yeah, I, I agree. Our nominees this year for sound are All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of Water, The Batman, Elvis, and Top Gun Maverick. And I yeah, think, Top Gun's got it. Inside. Yeah, given this, Top Gun's got Top it. Gun, yeah, totally has it. Yeah, <laughs> this sound any, design in that movie else was I will be completely shocked. Top Gun Maverick sound design was incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh. I mean, I love, I love that, that, that James cool, just but... finally threw in the towel on saying all the nominees' names. Yep. He's all the like, the first names. nominee is Victor Prasio. Hey, fuck this. <laughs> I'm going to be real. I got to pee real bad, so let's just get through this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> visual effects. Uh, visual effects nominees are All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, The Batman, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and Top Gun Maverick. No idea who's going to win wow. that. Maybe Avatar. Yeah, I mean, Avatar is like... It's got to. <laughs> It's. I mean, I, I'd I much rather bit. see the three bottom ones win, but, um, yeah, Avatar's I, I, insane visual effects yeah. wise. I mean, it's literally insane. I don't know how he does it. I I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. I'm going with Avatar for sure. I loved all the rest of them. I haven't seen all quite of course, but we'll see. All right, so let's go ahead and move on here to adapted screenplay for writing. We have All Quiet on the Western Front screenplay by uh, Edward Berger, Leslie. Patterson and Ian Stokel. Stokel. Okay. Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery, which is very interesting, uh, written by Ryan Johnson. Um, as a, a little peek behind the curtain here, we had to take a break so Ryan or James could go to the bathroom. So we had to cut that out. Oops. But I was at that time, I was looking up how, because I saw this as I was about to um, name the names. I didn't understand how Glass Onion could be an adapted screenplay. Apparently, it's because, because it's a sequel. Benoit Blanc yeah. is it's a continuation of the same character. So technically, mm -hmm. It's an adapted screenplay. I'm like, that's very same reason for the so, fourth movie in this category. Yeah. So, uh, Living by Kaz, um, Kazu Kazu uh, Ishiguru. There we go. Thank you. Top Gun Maverick. Ooh, awesome. Uh, Aaron Kruger, Eric Warren. Yeah. Singer. Don't say awesome yet. Look who and, got the uh, Academy Christopher Award nomination. Query, and then Women Talking by Sarah Polly. Okay. Woo, Canadian. Um, I don't know. No, I mean, like, I, I haven't seen Living. But I have seen women talking, and in the other ones, I've seen Glass Onion, and uh, I haven't seen All Quiet. But yeah, there, All there's Quiet a lot of front would be the front runner. There, there's a lot of talk about why Glass Onion and Top Gun Maverick were put in this category as opposed to original screenplay because they're not technically based on like a book or adapted from another medium. But the there's a character. rule within the within the Academy yeah. that if it's a sequel, because it's characters borrowed based from characters, another that's... screenplay the reuse of those characters automatically makes it an adapted screenplay. So that's why Glass well, Onion and Top Gun Maverick are in this category. Yeah, it makes perfect sense to me. Like it's not, it's not original. It's based on, like that's, if your movie has anything that says based on in the credits, and if you watch a sequel, it'll say written by such and such based on characters created by, and then the writers of the first movie. Now, um, I will know, say like, this. Story three, you know. Yeah. But I anyway, go ahead, Josh. After seeing Glass Onion, I wasn't a fan of the writing. Like I knew who the killer was the very second it happened. You said and the same even thing. Even after the, like the I revelations know. of how he why this person killed this people, I wasn't surprised. I don't it's, know. Um, 
<clears throat> Josh, you blew past the um the biggest uh, upsetting the most upsetting thing about this year's Oscars. So Jerry Bruckheimer, congratulations, first time nominee. Brennan Fraser, first time nominee. You guys all deserved it. And maybe this guy deserved it. Top Gun Maverick, by all counts, great film, <clears throat> good writing. But I just cannot believe I have to say the words Academy Award nominee Aaron Kruger. <laughs> Josh did a video. What he's done that offended you. Uh, Josh did a video one time where he actually added in sound effects to people cringe. You remember this? No, yeah, this remember. movie was written by Aaron Kruger. And if you don't remember, Aaron Kruger wrote Transformers 2. Ah, and he added yep. in the sound effects. People going, and Transformers 3. Transformers <laughs> Age of Extinction. And Dumbo. Ah. Well, and I was Scream- going to bring that up at the end because, yeah, I just. Oh, my God. I, like, I just pulled up his IMDb page. And literally, it's like 63, 41, 25, 24, 20, 37, 37, 11, 20, <laughs> 7, 17, 8, and then 96. I have a feeling I have a feeling that Eric Singer and Christopher McQuarrie held a lot of that weight. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. I guarantee you he first probably wrote it and they go, no, we're changing a shit ton of this. So let's just go back. Let's do or- this. <laughs> or basically, he just did a draft on there. It's like, oh, this is pretty good. Let's have, let's have, uh, Top Gun. Let's have Maverick say, well, you know, I don't something know if, else here. I don't know if it applies for the way they've written it here, but the way th- there's a difference between when they write out the word and and when they use an ampersand. The credits related to those are different. When it's when it's one, it's like the group wrote it. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think it's the ampersand the group wrote it, but when it's and they wrote individual drafts and mm-hmm. are all credited for it. So like this probably went through each of them individually. Yeah. Um based yeah. on this. I, I don't remember but if I, I don't got know that. where he fell in that. Was he, was he the first writer? Was he the last writer? Was he, yeah. you know? I will say out of all things he written, the only two that I liked as far as the writing was The Ring and Ghost in the Shell. The rest of them were just awful. <laughs> Just and awesome. there you have it, folks. There is a person out there who likes Ghost in the Shell. I like Ghost in the Shell. I had a good time. I, the I, original I mean, is very seen, influential. I've seen the original anime before that multiple times. I thought it was a good adaptation. And I do want to give a shout out to Sarah Pauly, who I don't know if you guys are even aware of her as a uh, director or writer. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a very prolific Canadian um, mm-hmm. filmmaker. She was a very famous child Canadian actor lady. in Canada for Road to Avonlea. I grew up watching her as you know, one of the mainstays of Canadian television. Um, And then she transitioned in like the early 2000s to a director and she's had like a prolific career as a director. Um, Mm -hmm. I didn't know she wrote too. So I'm very excited about this um, getting a nomination for. She was, uh, she was in, she was the lead in Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. (laughs) Yes, she was. That's right. Yeah. Cause I remember. (laughs) To be fair, to be fair, a lot of those actors are Canadian. In fact, I've met one of the actresses. (laughs) So you guys, um, so you guys are gonna kick out of this. So I am a, uh, I am taking film school right now. Um, some of you may or may not know, but I'm, I'm uh, taking a narrative class, and we had to pitch films today, and some, and they asked like what I would like to do. I'm like, well, I'd like to either do directing or uh, cinematography, but not writing. And someone asked me, why don't you like writing? I'm like, I'm not good at it. I yeah. am probably like, I am the Ben Affleck to someone else's Matt Damon, where I sit on the couch and give ideas. <laughs> oh, would you stop? That's a Family Guy sketch. That's no evidence <laughs> that that's how they wrote the film. Um, <laughs> but anyway, let's actually, move on. Yeah, we can talk later. Yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's move on. Ryan, you want to close us out? Close us out. Best original screenplay: The Banshees of Inner Sharon by Martin McDonough. Everything, everywhere, all at once by Daniel Kwan and Daniel Shiner. Daniels. The Fablemans by Steven Spielberg and Tony Kushner. Tar by Todd Field and Triangle of Sadness by Ruben Ostlund. Okay. Basically, these were all, all of these are written and directed by. These are all films that these people directed. Interesting. So. Um, and these are all I mean, like top contenders for yeah. um, other categories. Like it, it's not a surprise that they've won best writing because um, uh, was Triangles of Sadness best? Uh, yeah, you got nominated best director. Best no, director, but I meant picture. for best picture. Oh, for the other one, best the picture? other picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, good question. Let me scroll up real yeah. quick. And it was saying yes. Like yeah. I think these are probably at least three of these are your favorites for a lot of mm-hmm. categories. Um, yeah. So I it, mean, it's not Ryan, surprising. Ryan, I think you can. You're probably gonna say what the Fablemans is the front runner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I am. I'm rooting for 
everything ever all at once until I see the Fable Mans, I could change my mind easily. Or the Banshees or Tar or Triangle Sadness. But <laughs> the, the Fable you know, I was, I was, those, until I see anything else. The Fable but Mans from was what I uh, go ahead, James. Sorry. The Fable Mans is good, but it's a very like it's a very common sort of story. Like you've seen I don't think there's anything super special about the writing in that one, whereas everything everywhere at once, even though you have seen that story before, like the way they tell that story is so fascinating. I think I'd rather see that one win yeah. writing. Um, but then again, I always say you know, I'm the, the guy who wants to see Top Gun win. should have gotten from Doctor Strange. <laughs> like, remember, well, James, like, wouldn't you agree? That's like everything everyone wants is the multiverse of madness that we should have gotten from Doctor Strange. I mean, it's it's the universe jumping film that we should have got for a lot of movies. Yeah, um, especially because it, like one? it does it on such a like small scale. Oh. And it's it, yeah, it's outstanding. Um, yeah, I love that movie. I love everything about all. Of and as much as I love the Fablemans, like I don't know, I think everything everywhere all at once with such a like fresh plus like A twenty four is such a prolific studio, and I would like to see them, you know, get a little more gold in their category. Like we've seen Spielberg win so many times. <laughs> um, I think he's a shoe in for a director, but like, um, I would really like to see the Daniels win. If if they're not going to get the director category, then at least get the you know screenplay category. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But again, all I'm right, guys. For Top Gun. So. Yep. Well, that will do us for tonight. Thank you so much for this long row. This is a long video. We do appreciate it, though. We wanted to break down all the big categories for you, and give our thoughts. But more importantly, what are your thoughts on the nominations? Were there some big snubs? Uh, leave your comments and share your thoughts. I know a lot of um, there's some articles coming out how there were no female directors nominated. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And also just the thoughts overall. What were your snubs and what were your surprises? And who are you rooting for to win? Jump in the comments and let us know. Also, if you like what you watch, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you receive all of our great content we have coming for you here on Real Time. That's all we have for today. Again, I am Josh Williams. I'm Ryan Murphy. And I'm James Sheridan. And thank you for keeping it real with real time. Good night.